My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to take a look at a very popular technique, which is designing a lower third. Now, Photoshop is well suited for this task because it easily lets you combine text, texture, graphic elements, logos to create compelling titles for your show. Let's see how you go about the process. I'm going to go ahead over to Photoshop and choose File, New and then go to the Film and Video category where I can specify a correct preset for my design project. Now, I'm going to design it 720p because that's what I need for my particular program and click OK. One of the things I recommend is you put a photo in the back of your lower third right away so you have something to put the lower third over. Now, this could be a video clip or a sample frame from a headshot of a video you're working on or just a regular photo something back there to really help you judge things like transparency and color. Let's go ahead and do that by saying File Place and I'll just grab my reference frame. In this case we're just using a bird but you can use something else. And we're going to go ahead and add some other images in here. So we'll go ahead and just start to grab these. Let's say File Place and I'm going to start with some different textures. You see that we've got this nice industrial texture. I'll grab a few more. I've got a brushed stroke texture, which is from a fabric back. And some industrial textures. Now, we're going to actually post these project files for you up over at creativecow.net, and you can download them and work with them if you want to play along. So we've got a few things to work with here. That's working pretty well. And let's just start to design. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is get the general shape for your lower third. You could choose to do this with the marquee tool or using shape layers. I'm going to start with shape layers. And you'll find those over here in your tools. Shortcut key is U, and you'll find rectangles, rounded rectangles, as well as custom shapes. Let's start with the rounded rectangle tool and start to draw out our initial shape here. Up at the top of the options bar, we've got three choices. The first one is to make a shape layer. The second is paths, and the last one are filled pixels. Let's go with shape layers. This will be a little more versatile as you could scale it up because it's truly a vector object. And I'll go ahead and draw out the initial bar that we're going to use for the lower third. There we go. That looks pretty good. And we'll position that in the frame here, and I'm going to let it go off the edge a bit. Now, I want to fill that with some texture right away. Well, the great news is, is that we could easily do that using one of our texture layers. Let's just call that bar and grab one of our photos here. I'll do Command-T or Control-T for free transform and rotate it. And this has a nice skylight texture from a train station, and I'm just using it really for both color and texture here. Drop that in, and if we put that immediately above the bar, we could choose Layer, Create Clipping Mask and it goes ahead and traps that into the shape of the bar. That's working pretty well. I'll select those two layers there, and we'll just group those, Layer, Group, or Command or Control G. And now they're in a folder, and I'll call that Lower Bar. Now, that set there can actually have a mask applied. So if we click the new mask icon, it adds an empty layer mask. And now I'll grab my gradient tool and use my black to white gradient. White is opaque, black is transparent. So let's just go ahead here, click and drag, and you see that we get a ramped transparency in the bar area. You can go ahead and redraw that gradient a few different ways, and you'll see how it gets affected. So using the gradient tool with the layer mask is an easy way to get that ramped transparency that's very popular. Let's go ahead and put a little more texture in here, and I'm going to design just a color strip. So we'll add another shape. This time we'll use the rounded rectangle again and draw it out. And we're just using a small bar here as sort of a dividing element. Let's select that photo layer and say layer, create clipping mask. Now it indents it to that shape. We could press Command or Control T for free transform and scale that however we need. If we want to, we can even stylize that. Let's take both of those objects, shift click so they're both selected, and we're now going to convert those to a smart object. You remember from last week's show, we talked about the flexibility of smart objects. What I just did here was took two layers and merged them together. 
but it's not a permanent merge. I could just click on that object and say Smart Objects, Edit Contents, and step right inside. Notice then that we have the flexibility to nudge things around and make our refinements. Close that, save it, and it updates. Now I've got that selected. Let's just apply a slight bevel. There we go. And we'll change the color. I'm going to go ahead and say Color Overlay and sample a blue here from the image. And we'll set that to Color Mode. So now we're getting the textures to interact, but it's very flexible. And I'll put a little drop shadow behind that and just nudge it into place. There we go. Soften that up a bit. So we've got our basic bar. We've got a lower weight anchor here. That's looking pretty good. If I wanted to, I could introduce other elements. I'm just going to put a small anchor on the left here. Let's go ahead and take our custom shape. And I'm going to use the ellipse and just draw one more shape. There we go. Position that in place. And I want to hide parts of this photo. So we can go ahead and load that original shape. If I just command click or control click on its thumbnail, it loads it as a selection. And we can now say mask that shape. And notice that the circle is constrained. I'm going to grab that top texture there, place it above, and simply say Layer Create Clipping Mask. Notice it indents it and it applies it in there. And same thing at play. Right click, convert to Smart Object, and we could take advantage of layer styles as we need to, adding bevels, things of those nature. Let's go ahead and put that color overlay back on, and we'll grab the color of the blue. There we go. Lose the bevel, we don't need it. And just put that into color mode. That looks pretty good. Or maybe a little darker with multiply. I like color. That works best. There we go. A little bit of satin. And we have a nice looking lower third bar. Now, at this point, we're not done, but we've got the bar built. What we're going to do next week when we come back to this lesson is add the logo as well as the text elements and get it saved with an embedded alpha channel so it's all set for the video editing program. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. I'm Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Photoshop forums and interact with us there. Thanks again.